Assalamu alaikum everyone, my name is Miska Jahan and in today's video I just wanted to talk about a certain topic that has been running through my mind for as long as I can remember. I don't know, I just feel like it's important to say these things and to have these type of discussions because I feel like not a lot of people are talking about it. Sometimes the people that do talk about these things, like they're like from another generation and they find out, like we find it hard to connect to them because sometimes they don't really make an effort to connect to us and all this other stuff. So I just thought I would talk about it. And yeah, before I get into it, make sure to like leave, if you're gonna leave a comment, which I really love when you guys leave comments, uh, make sure to keep it PG and respectful. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Okay, so my parents, they left Afghanistan. I'm Afghan, Pashtun. They left Afghanistan because they wanted to escape all of the craziness that was happening over there. A lot of human rights abuse, um, lots of violence, war, all this other stuff, right? And they wanted to escape that sort of lifestyle to come to the US because there's a lot more freedom here. Human rights are protected. You know, there was a lot of like religious abuse as well, like abuse in the name of religion, unfortunately. Yeah, I think that, you know, a lot of Afghans who migrate to other countries like Europe or um, the US, if you've seen um, abuse that happens, and people try to justify it using religion, it kind of puts a bad taste in your mouth. And you know, if that's all you've ever known, like if the only thing you've ever seen associated with a religion is abuse, then it's gonna be hard to like dig through that and really find peace within your faith, which I understand. And you know, a lot of, yeah, a lot of the Afghans that do come overseas to live here, you can kind of see like this like dual identity where they really try to be actually it's not even dual it's like triple identity like they're trying to be american but at the same time you know they're sticking to their afghan culture and then um every once in a while they'll be muslim but yeah growing up i saw like all these contradictions happening and yeah i kind of found it hard to navigate through that and i'm really glad that what is it like i, I have really good parents alhamdulillah and they really instilled into me the importance of having an Islamic education. They always took me and my siblings to Islamic school on the weekends and like alhamdulillah I have such good parents and they really made it a priority for us to understand that this place that we live in, America, it's very fortunate for us to live here but at the same time we shouldn't fall prey to like the stuff that like some of their habits you know. My parents did like a really good job of making that clear to us. They're like no you're not we don't do dating, we don't drink, we don't do all this other stuff that is uh, haram activities, right? Honestly, like my siblings and I, like out of, I would say that out of all the Afghan like children over here, we're probably like the most well-behaved. Um, we didn't create any problems for our parents. Well, I hope we didn't, but <laughs> you know, I think out of all the kids here, I think that we've done a really good job because our parents instilled into us the importance of being and like how to make it work in this dunya, right? And you know, I feel so sorry for other kids whose parents didn't create this sort of relationship with them. And I've seen, and it's, I don't know if it's like, like I don't want to blame parents, but I feel like a lot of parents here have not talked to their children about how important it is to be Muslim and stay Muslim because it's going to make your life so much easier. It's not just for Akhira, it's also for this life as well. Yeah, growing up here, uh, I didn't wear the hijab. My mother and my sisters, they do not wear a scarf. But at the same time, like we pretty much did everything else that was required as Muslims. It wasn't even until I got engaged to my husband and, you know, if, if I had not been like a good Muslim, if I didn't have a good character, my husband would not have been attracted to me, right? And I wouldn't have been attracted to him because I would have been a completely different person. Something that I've noticed over here is that you have a lot of girls that grow up here and their intention is, yeah, I would love to marry someone who is, you know, within my religion, but they do not, it's like almost like they fail to like market themselves like that. Um, they you know, dress provocatively and they act like they're not, they're, they act in ways that they're not supposed to act. They go to clubs, they drink, but they're like, okay, within a few years, like I'll stop this habit and eventually like I'll be whoever I am to be. And they kind of throw off, um, they put off growing up and it just creates such a problem from them in, for them in the long run. And um, I've seen it happen here where you have these women who are like approaching their 30s or already in their 30s and they can't find someone to marry because they messed around so much. And yeah, I guess like the moral of this whole talk is just to like, you know, if you're gonna be Muslim, 
pick a side <laughs> if you're not gonna be muslim pick a side it's you shouldn't try so hard to fall in between because it's only gonna create more problems for you in the future if i'm a muslim guy right and i'm trying to look for a good wife i'm gonna stick with someone who knows her values and is not like second guessing every single little thing so that's pretty much what i wanted to talk about yeah just like if you're a muslim pick a side make sure that you're muslim and that every action that you do proves that and you know don't fall prey to like all of these like temporary um luxuries or whatever temporary indulgences that are not going to benefit you in the long run and will actually harm you and will ruin the life that you could have had if you had just stuck to whatever you really believed in so yes that is a talk that i wanted to have today sorry to get really like dark but you know i had like growing up i saw so many women who were like like they should have been married they should have had kids by that time and they were like just hanging around and like it was so clear that they were like dating just like random people i don't, I don't know how random it was but like and it was not just women it was like men too just people just messing around messing with their time and you know life is not you're supposed to live your life strategically but unfortunately over here it's marketed that you should just do whatever in your 20s and then in your 30s you'll grow up later eventually right but that is actually not the case and it just sets you up for our hardship and failure and all this other stuff so yeah that is the talk i wanted to have today let me know what you guys think and something that i really appreciate about having this channel is that like we we've gathered as a group of like-minded women right majority of my subscribers are women and you know we agree on like mostly like same things right we want to be good wives want to be good daughters just good muslimas all together uh, we just want to be the best we can and like i'm so glad to have this platform where we can just talk and discuss these sort of things and i would love to hear your stories and i am looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say so yes i will see you guys next time maybe we'll have another one of these chats let me know if you guys want more of these chats because i really love talking about these type of things and you know growing up i didn't really have a lot of people to like share these type of thoughts with so i think it would be fun and yes, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Assalamualaikum.